Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the chart of Priceline.com I've been following very closely obviously because I'm short and the Dow overlaid NetDenia.com this is the weekly chart. Now this doesn't completely do it justice I believe that there is going to be a crash and if you get if you get in close enough you can actually see that these two trade fairly tightly together uh, there's a lot of algos pumping these things but I believe that once this Nasdaq begins to crash and Priceline is the biggest leader of this Priceline Apple Google Facebook all these dot-com part two companies that when these crash we're going to have a spectacular collapse that I think actually is going to be more severe than the collapse we had in 2008 which you can see here now it kinda just looks like a little blip on the radar screen so that's kinda scary but so let's get into the main topic now this this one is going to go way down the rabbit hole and uh, so if you're not into the conspiracy sort of stuff uh, just go ahead and tune out but it actually starts with an article that I came across this morning when I was doing my daily news searching and I came across an article that came out yesterday about NASA funding a study which predicts the likely collapse of civilization so that really piqued my interest this is William Costello and let's read a little bit of this a new scientific study partially funded by NASA predicts that our current economic framework will likely cause a collapse of civilization the study published in ecological economics has received much online attention recently based on its theory that previous instances of civilization collapse occurred based on the depletion of natural resources which depletion occurred at a faster rate than necessary due to inequitable distribution of such resources the study noted that the creation of commoner and elite segments in previous civilizations led to overconsumption of resources and it goes on those reading between the lines can see the potential hot button issues blah 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 and NASA tried to back away from this but this is very very interesting because we know that NASA is not above board we'll say NASA I call never a straight answer or num numerous anomalies and scams abound of course many of you know my position on the Apollo moon landings and all the other nonsense that NASA has put out over the years but this one is very very interesting because let's examine this idea here now NASA is telling us or the people who did this study are telling us that stratified societies in other words societies that have a large number of commoners and a small number of elites now we know that's exactly what we have right that those led to the overconsumption of resources now if you just use your common sense and think about that that really doesn't make any sense at all whether you're thinking about ancient Egypt with the pharaohs and the ruling class and a large number of slaves or whether you're thinking about any other society like that it would seem just based on logic that a society that has a very very large number of serfs whose daily business amounts to just working all of their waking hours to 
build the structures of this elite civilization and then the elites live off that that would indicate a much lower consumption of natural resources the type of society which would cause a large amount of consumption of natural resources and remember this whole thing is nonsense and I'm going to show you that that the whole thing is complete nonsense anyway that this is just a justification for some type of agenda that they have but you can see here that this whole premise is completely faulty so we're going to spend some time looking at Google Earth but if you look at for example right now in the world today as I pointed out many times the very very large and growing economy is in China now as the middle class grows in a society and we know that people are alike all around the world everybody's the same people human nature is the same people would like to have the modern conveniences husbands would like to have their wives be able to have whatever modern conveniences they need to make their lives easier whether that's washing machines dishwashers lawn mowers all the stuff that uh, that people want to make their lives easier TVs laptops computers cell phones all this stuff now a large middle class in a society is going to be the largest drain on natural resources and the United States is a perfect example although that is rapidly declining now so we know for a fact that the United States is the largest disproportionate consumer of those types of goods and we know the reason why because it has such a large middle class which is rapidly being destroyed by the same elites that are bringing you this type of program but we also know that China has the fastest growing middle class and that is causing them to consume a, a much much larger share of the natural resources so this NASA funded study could not be more incorrect it's absolutely the opposite of the truth a society which has a large number of serfs and a tiny number of elites is going to be the most or I should say the least taxing on the scarce quote-unquote resources of the world now we know that those sorts of things are true we know the Georgia Guidestones this is a plan by the elites to have a manageable society you can see the inscriptions put out the ten mocking or mimicking the Ten Commandments of the Bible uh, the ten sets of guidelines you have laws in the Bible you have guidelines here on the guide stones maintain humanity under 500 million and that means about six and a half billion are gonna have to die guide reproduction wisely unite humanity with a living new language etc etc so these people are serious nutcases that are doing this stuff and just to show you that this is not a fantasy this is not a conspiracy theory first thing I want to do is take you to a city here if you do a look up on Wikipedia you'll find the largest cities in the world that Lagos which is in Africa is actually number two it's a Lagos Nigeria or Lagos Nigeria is the second largest city in the world by population now that's the city proper you could find other cities with their outlying areas but this this serves the purpose so you can see when we look at this world map that it pretty much doesn't even show up in fact the country of Nigeria is just this little section here now as we begin to zoom in you can see that the vast majority of Nigeria just as the vast majority of all of the rest of the world is 
is pretty much nothing but wilderness. You can see here that there's areas of the Congo, and I'm going to show you in, in the Amazon as I've shown you before, that uh, if, if you were lost in one of these areas, uh, you're not getting out because it's just the middle of nowhere. But let's look at Lagos or Lagos. And this is 17 million people. So you can see down here with our mile marker here, you can see that we're talking about the width of this city proper. We'll just say about 10 miles and then it's probably about 20 miles. We'll just say for sake of argument that it's about 20 miles by 20 miles. So if we wanted to duplicate the Earth's population in an area then the Earth's population is roughly 400 times this 17 million of the population of this city. So that would require 400 square blocks about this size. Now that's really only 20 by 20 so we really only need about 100 miles or so. But we'll just say 200 miles for sake of argument. So we're talking about a block of land we'll just use this right here 185 by 185 about this large to contain all of the earth's population with roughly the density that we have in in Lagos Nigeria now where could we fit that well we could go up into Siberia and you can see here when we get down to about 400 you can see that in this area right here which probably you'd be lucky to find a person or a road you could fit the entire earth's population with the density of, of Lagos how about South America you certainly wouldn't want to be dropped out of a plane somewhere here in the Amazon rainforest because I can tell you you're not getting out of there there's no roads there's nothing and you can see here we've got about one two three four five six maybe even eight areas as large as the area that we're talking about contain the entire Earth's population with the density of that city it would also fit right here in the Yucatan Peninsula which by the way in the past there was a civilization a very very large civilization which is now completely overgrown by jungle and you can't even find it by satellite in fact they only found it when they were on the ground and that's how they found all of these ruins which had ultimately been completely overgrown in jungle so that's the facts of what's out there pretty much the earth is pristine as far as mankind on it so what is all of this about what is going on well I'm going to show you a couple of documents here and these were found by this woman who's being interviewed in this video we'll play a little bit of this so this document talks about a combination of irresistible attacks upon humanity and how they will control humanity. Politically, they talk about how they set up the uh, political system right and left so that we would feel um, our grievances were aired and our frustrations could uh, come out. But the bankers were behind everyone who was elected and they laugh at us they laugh at us the very very last and I'll go to this right now because we'll come back to the document itself but the very last statement in this document it says factor six cattle those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains and so this mindless school of je jellyfish 
father, mother, son, and daughter become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. So what they say in this document is they will dole out poisonous foods. It's not what we need, but it's what we want. And those that decide to eat these foods will have the consequences of that. They tell us uh, how they set up all the social engineering, how they devise the family, how they crumble the family, how they set up the war machine, how they influence thinking uh, in the family unit to allow the family to give up their children to war for a rich man's fodder. It's, it's a document that discusses uh, the artificial womb. They believe that people need to feel protected. So it goes much further. I encourage you to watch that video. Now there's actually two documents that are exposed on that site. You can come to your own conclusions as to whether these documents are real. This is a purported NASA document, the Future Strategic Issues Issue uh, Warfare the future is now and you can see here it's got that official NASA logo you can see that it is for the US Air Force DARPA CIA FBI Southern Command Atlantic Command Australian DOD and more and just go ahead and read through this it is absolutely fascinating about what they're talking about and uh, what they're talking about in essence is a war against humanity that's what they have planned that's what they're doing right now that's what they intend to do so this NASA story that I found today of course this is the exact opposite of truth this is the stuff for the sheeple now she links another document and this document is called silent weapons for quiet wars now supposedly this has been debunked this was acquired by William Cooper now we know hopefully all know who William Cooper is supposedly he was bumped off by the powers that be but we have a very fascinating statement in this document supposedly it's top secret uh, welcome aboard and let's look at this security statement on this document security it is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of society ie the engineering of social automation systems silent weapons on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life i.e. slavery and genocide this manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent such writing must be secured from public scrutiny otherwise it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war furthermore whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodologies for economic conquest it must be understood that a state of domestic war exists between said person or group of persons and the public did you get that that means that the release of this information is an acknowledgement that there is a state of war against you the solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid with no agonizing over religious or moral or cultural values you have qualified for this project why because you're a psychopath because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without the loss of discretion or humility such virtues are exercised in your own 
best interest do not deviate from them sounds like a bit of a threat there so they're acknowledging here that what they're talking about amounts to a state of warfare or even potentially genocide against human populations just a cursory glance at the globe on Google Earth will tell you that there are vast 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 I can't emphasize this enough unexplored unutilized areas on the earth where there are no human beings at all you can see there's thousands of times the areas of empty land than there are the cities the cities are so small that you have to keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in until you find them so obviously all of this stuff about shortages about resources about a lack of food all of these things are lies that are created by genocidal monsters who have no concern for the planet or for human life they only have a concern for complete control over all humanity because they are ruthless dictators that's the essence of it and it has absolutely nothing to do with a lack of resources or a stratification of society what we're talking about here are ruthless anti-human anti-life NASA Nazis who are dedicated to the destruction of humanity and hopefully God stops them before they get away with it. And we'll talk to you next time.